Hello again. So today I wanted to say something about perspective because I think with um, the coronavirus and being in lockdown at the moment our perspective can get very small and particularly our perspective about um, what's fair or unfair or what the government are doing or what they're not doing about fears for our life and so on and um, I was just thinking about the coronavirus in terms of it being you know a natural disaster that um, that viruses uh, are very good at perpetuating themselves and finding ways to um, circumvent anything we do about uh, trying to get rid of them and so on you know that they, they are they're doing what they naturally uh, want to do or need to do um, and I was thinking how we can get very preoccupied with numbers uh, all the people that are dying daily at the moment from the virus so I had to look at some of the um, statistics for um, for deaths in um, other places not from the virus but from other well natural disasters and not so natural so for example in Bangladesh in 1974 the monsoons created floods that killed 28,700 people 28,700 from a flood and then earthquakes also have been responsible for killing a lot of people so for example in Tongshan in China in July of 1976 and I can remember 1976 very clearly it took 242,000 lives one earthquake 242,000 lives more recently in Haiti there was an earthquake in 2010 which killed 222,570 lives from an earthquake there. So one thing I often think of is just how much more we care about, um, about disasters that happen closer to home. And in a way there's, there's no rationale to that. The only um, way that we can understand it is the kind of fear for our own lives. Fear that, um, you know, relief that it's not us and fear that it might, it might happen to us, that it could happen to us. And um, ongoingly, before the coronavirus, before we had our very minor floods by comparison with the ones I've been talking about, um, there was a lot in the news about Syria and about the deaths there and so on. Well, apparently, and don't forget, this is not a natural disaster. This is human beings killing other human beings. And in Syria last year, apparently it was the lowest death rate in the nine years of the war. But even so, there were 11,215 deaths. Unnecessary deaths. Not natural disaster deaths, but deaths caused by people killing other people. So these are things that, you know, we can be bearing in mind that, um, yeah, that we can see the coronavirus as a natural disaster. And um, that, of course, it's creating suffering. Of course it is. But suffering is always there. Suffering is going on all the time with earthquakes, with floods, with wars and so on. Um, but we are fortunate in this country that, often it's not very close to home you know we don't tend to get extreme weather and so on so it's something to bear in mind so I thought I'd uh, read you one of my verses that I wrote some time ago and it's called anonymous or anon after I'm gone leaving no legacy of daughter, son or a fine novel. 
When my ashes have cooled and settled back into the vast earth, no one will ever know my one small life. Millions have come and gone this way. I'll read it again. After I'm gone, leaving no legacy of daughter, son or a fine novel, when my ashes have cooled and settled back into the vast earth, no one will ever know my one small life. Millions have come and gone that way. So yeah, I was on solitary retreat at the time and I often um, contemplate death at, that, at those times. And yeah, seeing myself in perspective, maybe it, it sounds to you like quite a depressing sort of um, verse, but it isn't to me. It, it kind of puts things in perspective. It's like, yes, millions have come and gone that way. And I too am going to go that way, you know, and in a very short time, no one will ever remember me. I won't leave anything behind. And there's a certain freedom in that. There's a certain release. There's a certain, well, having to let go, being forced to let go. You, you can't do anything else. It's like it will happen. It's the one certainty we have. And um, whew, just let go, you know. Live in today, not for today, but in today. Live right inside today. Yes, another thing I did on solitary that was very powerful for me was I was uh, drawing some pictures and I drew um, a mandala of my life. And in it, I drew uh, in one little section a coffin. And I put the date of my birth, which was 1953. So I put my date of birth there and then I put a dash and I put 2000 and and I didn't know what date to put so I left it empty and I reflected on the fact that I didn't know when I was going to die but there was a date, there was a date that definitely will be there and it was, yes it was just extraordinary to contemplate that you know I didn't know what date belonged there but that but there was going to be a date there is going to be a date and it, it brought it much closer to home it's very hard for me I think to describe why those sort of thoughts and reflections aren't aren't depressing you know um, it's a kind of relaxation into how things are it's a letting go of grasping on or kind of thinking that um, there's going to necessarily be a future for me, for I, for whoever that is. So yes, today I want to live right inside life. I want to really enjoy this blue sky. I want to enjoy the peace. I don't want to feel guilty about the peace because other people are suffering. I know they're suffering. I care about their suffering. I will chant for them. I will bear them in mind. I will send them metta and compassion. But I also want to live. I want to be within life and really feel the wind on my face if I'm outside. I want to, um, I want to be fully alive. So, yeah, that's what I've got to say today. See you tomorrow.